My father came here in the late 20s, 28, 29, came to Rhodesia and worked up on a tobacco farm in the Mfukwis. Didn't enjoy it. He heard that there was a lot of good hunting down in this area, the Sabi Valley. So he got a train to Mutari and then he walked down and Davuli Ranch was going and then and he worked there for a few years and then he found Humani here and then developed up as a cattle ranch. It had always been my wish to turn it into a game farm, so we started in the late 60s and 70s introducing different species of game. In about 91, we had a tremendous drought when all the cattle died, when 90% of them died. So we got all the farmers in the area and we said, why not restock with game? instead of cattle. So we agreed and that's how the conservancy started. What was decided back then because of the drought uh, and also the safari industry was uh, really taking off was that uh, they'd remove all the cattle fences, remove all the cattle and we would introduce, uh, reintroduce game uh, that was indigenous to the area originally. We didn't bring any uh, species that weren't here originally. We had to give big game. We didn't have any big game in here. The importance of having this big game is because hunters want to shoot big game. Trying to operate on plans game, you know, you're never going to get anywhere. And there was a CITES conference in Japan. And the delegates that came back from there, you know, gave us talks and that. And they said that uh, the outcome of that was Zimbabwe was shooting a lot of elephants, uh, culling elephants in those days. And they said to Zimbabwe, you'll do something with your elephant population other than to kill them. So I thought about this and I went to see our chairman, who was Clive Stockel, and I said, let's go and see parks and see if we can get a permit. We did so. And they gave us a permit because this had never been done before. So between 1993 and probably 1998, we brought in around 600 elephant, mainly from Gonorrhoe National Park that had been badly affected by the drought too. We had to move a family group at a time. We employed Klim Kutsi and he developed up the method with conveyor beltings where you wrap the conveyor belting around and you haul them all into the trucks. We built big pens on Humani to accommodate them because the trucks were coming in at different times. So we get all the elephants together in the pens and then release them. And the elephant bulls that I had here suddenly found out what was going on. So when we opened the gates, they'd come in and get the elephants out of there. So we brought in about 550. So that was, you know, the start of the game coming in. 
Now, whilst we're on elephants, that is built up now to around about three and a half thousand, which is too many for the conservancy. We moved a hundred to the Zambezi Valley three or four years ago. Now moving another, trying to move 400. I think the target is this year around about 100, and then we do the rest next year. We weren't allowed to have buffalo here because of foot and mouth. After the conservancy started, we had to put a double fence around the conservancy so the buffalo could not have contact with cattle. And if we did that, they'd allow us to bring buffalo in. We did all that, and then buffalo came in. Bought about 600 buffalo, and then a lot of other species like giraffe, wildebeest, zebra, sable, nyala, a long list of game. Uh, mainly just to boost the numbers that were here. All this capture and everything we brought in, it's all been paid for by hunters. And then through a lot of hard work and effort by the members, putting water in, removing all the cattle fences, a lot of anti-poaching, a lot of uh, snare, old snares uh, from, still left in the field from the cattle days. So just removing all those original snares. Over the years, the game built up to really great numbers. A lot of other key species, things like lion, wild dogs, leopard, that were really persecuted during the cattle days, obviously being predators. Their numbers are actually to where we're trying to now remove some to resupply parks that have been depleted over the past. With wildlife, it takes 10 years to get the numbers to where they hit that exponential where they start doing well. If they get hammered by poaching, the numbers go down quick. And once you're down, it takes a long time to get back. So maintaining our anti-poaching is critical. And obviously, even on a ranch level, anti-poaching is quite a substantial amount of money every year. Vehicles, diesel, staff, management to keep up with the staff. And without hunting income, you would have to cut. Once you're on that downhill slippery slope, it, 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 it's very difficult to recover. You have to keep your anti-poaching at, at, at peak. We are dependent on our safari clients to keep us going.